Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another episode review. This time we will be going over Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 35, the duel between Tiger and Caterpillio of the Machine Cavalry Duel Club. Uh, generally speaking, what did I think about this episode? I'm sure if some of you have already seen 7's Up, you probably already know, uh, but I did enjoy this episode quite a bit. I definitely liked it a lot more than last week's episode. Uh, last week's episode... I thought the ending was really good, but other than that, Finger Chicago didn't really do too much for me. Uh, Sebastian's monsters were cool, but this episode I just thought had a lot more personality to it, and that may have been solely because of one character, uh, and that would be Tiger, Rook's older sister, who after only really two episodes of her being in, I already love. I absolutely love this character. Uh, she is such a unique character, in my opinion, especially for a girl in Yu-Gi-Oh. She has this confident, fired-up personality, uh, beyond fired-up, really, that you don't really see in many girls. She's just fierce. She is a fierce woman. Uh, the last character that reminded me a lot of her was Serena, who I liked a lot in Arc 5. Didn't really love what they did with her second half of the show, but personality and just the, the boldness and confidence on borderline arrogance that they have is something that I absolutely love watching. And so for me, the reason I like this episode so much was absolutely because of Tiger. First of all, she's the one that steps up to actually uh, get in the way of Caterpillio and save Yuga's club. I like how they brought in um, Bakuro and Yoshio and their friends to try and stop Caterpillio and the Machine Cavalry Duel Club, but they were unsuccessful because Caterpillio is just very good at dismantling things. He's able to dismantle Yoshio's uh, outfit, which that was... Uh, part of me even forgets that they were in this episode. You know, they ran off in their underwear. Kind of a, a, weird, <laughs> a weird scene there. Uh, and Bakuro and his two other friends, I'll give them credit because for how annoying that they are and for how annoying that they can be, they were willing to die to try and protect Yuga's laboratory. Uh, they literally were not budging as this huge machine was rolling and barreling to them. And I think Bakaro, or it might've been the, the girl reporter said, I think we're gonna die here. You know, we're willing to die here if we have to. So I do give them credit, even though, you know, they, they are kind of spineless journalists at times and they kind of play into that trope, I think a little bit. And I think they play into the trope well. Uh, they were willing to stand their ground there to protect Yuga and his invention. So I will give them props and I will give them the, the respect that they deserve for that. But Tiger's the one that throws down her bassoon. Uh, the dismantling tools of Caterpillio that are made from Gohanium or Gohanium, however you pronounce it, cannot dismantle this bassoon. It's strong enough to literally flip the tank that they are rolling in on its back. And so Tiger gets in the way of Caterpillio and Yuga's destruction, at least Yuga's laboratory destruction, and stands up for everyone and is able to duel Caterpillio. And something that I thought was a really big missed opportunity in this episode, there seemed to have been a backstory and a history between Tiger and a lot of the characters in the Machine Cavalry Club. And I don't really know why that was not expanded on. Uh, clearly, Caterpillio knows who Tiger is on a first and last name basis. And then Tiger makes a comment that says, I already told you back in the third grade, didn't I? Call me Tiger. So these characters have a deep, maybe not a deep history, but a history in the sense of they have known each other for years, because it's probably been four or five years, I would imagine, since Tiger was in the third grade. So clearly they knew each other, and something I would have loved to see is maybe a flashback to when they were in the third grade. I think this would have made it a lot more personal and maybe invested a lot of the audience a little better, even though I was invested in the duel. But I, you know, you can never be too invested in a duel, in my opinion. There's always ways to enhance and improve. And something I would have done is I would have loved if Tiger maybe got her inspiration from Caterpillio in the sense of being able to stand up for herself. Maybe you show a flashback to the third grade, Caterpillio is bullying Tiger, which would immediately make the viewer hate Caterpillio more, which is the goal, because he's obviously on the bad side in this duel and of this show at the moment. And Tiger finally stands up for the first time in her life, stands up to someone, and ever since that day, she went on this 
journey of self-fulfillment that she has very successfully completed. And so if Caterpillio was the turning point for Tiger back in the third grade, I thought that would have added a lot of, um, a lot of emotion to the duel and a lot of personal stakes to the duel as well, where she's finally able to seal the deal as being better than Caterpillio. And, and you know, it shows that bullying does not pay off, but they didn't go down that route, which was weird that they didn't touch on it again. Not necessarily that they didn't go down that particular route, but weird that they just left that as almost a one-liner. So the duel continues, and Tiger is able to get the better of Caterpillio. And something that I love with her character and her demeanor is she never at any point shows any sort of weakness or vulnerability. Even when Caterpillio has her against the ropes and is dealing big damage to her, she smirks after she takes the damage and just goes, is that all? and then continues on her path. Like, it's incredible the spunk and attitude that this girl has towards moments that would cause any other character to grimace or to look a little worried. She has none of that. She has none of those emotions at any point in this duel, no matter how bad it looks. And one of the reporters even comments that she should be one of the best duelists in the world and that it was an upset that she lost to Yuga, even suggesting that maybe she threw the duel against Yuga. I think we might all be underestimating just how good Tiger's dueling abilities are, and that really stems from her being good at seemingly everything she touches. Uh, remember, she is the only person that we know of in this universe that beat Rook. I know it was not a rush duel, but that still counts for something. Also, if we do not get a Tiger versus Rook duel at some point, I will be thoroughly upset. And so Tiger's confidence just gleams this entire duel, and she finally is able to summon a new ace monster. Another line that caught my attention is when she summoned her ace monster, which was new to us as an audience, uh, Caterpillio made a comment and said, see, I was waiting for you to use your ace, as if he's familiar with her deck, at least more familiar with her deck than the audience is, and has seen her duel before or has studied her or knows who she is. So that again ties into the fact that I just felt there was way more between these characters that was then was let on. Uh, but anyway, Tiger gets her new ace onto the field, which looked awesome. The, the fingered bassoon, or it was not called that at all, but I'll hopefully have it on screen. But it, it's an awesome ace. She's able to boost it up to 6,600. She's able to use a card that allows her to deal piercing damage, a classic way to just inflict very big pain to your opponent when they are least expecting it. She gets her attack off, and she wins the duel. And Caterpillio's mask becomes dismantled. Everything that he was trying to do to Yuga and his friends happens to him when the mask gets dismantled at the end, which I thought was really, really cool symbolism. Also, the bassoon scene of Tiger discovering her instrument I'm not going to really comment too much on. It was a cool scene, but I would have rather seen a, a, some sort of personal moment or real-life moment between her and Caterpillio uh, because, again, it was hinted at. So that, that was something that I felt, again, missed opportunity. Didn't mind the bassoon scene, but just a little bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion. To further prove or to further enhance the thought that Tiger knows who these people are, Galliant comes up from the ground, and to our knowledge, this is the first time that Tiger should ever be seeing Galliant. But instead of acting surprised or shocked, she literally goes, I was just thinking about you. As if she has, again, a long-standing memory and history with these characters. And Galliant shows up, and Galliant is someone who, as the episode's on, continues to gain respect in my eyes because he just loses with such graciousness and and he's so determined on helping the great one any way he can as long as it does not disrespect almost any other duelists in the process at least when they get defeated and so he convinces caterpillio to leave he says that caterpillio did this on his own accord which tiger then i think responds that sounds about right again as if she knows the cadences of the people in this club it just it's just crazy to me that it was never expanded on gallant and um Caterpillio leave, the Machine Cavalry Club leaves, Tiger comments that that was not the true strength of the Machine Cavalry Club and for Rook and Yuga to be very careful. They, meanwhile, are in the cave system. Kaizo brings back one of Khan's, um, I think Hunter was the name, one of the Dino Kid's uh, assistants on Neil's behalf, actually, and the Dino Kid unveils this uh, ho hollowed out cave wall and 
a tunnel, or really a hall, a formal hallway, uh, which you can tell is, you know, chiseled with brick, so th it's gonna lead to somewhere legitimate, uh, un is unveiled when the Dino Kid sneezes, and I guess that's where we will be going in the next episode. But all in all, it was an episode that I thought Tiger carried, but I really did enjoy it, and any episode with Tiger in it, I'm gonna really enjoy, I think, going forward. She is slowly, ri her and Galliant are very quickly rising up on my favorite characters list in this show. Uh, they were they would probably both be in my top 10 right now. I have really enjoyed her and Galliant. And I enjoy that the show can go away from Yuga and the main group for a little bit and focus on our side characters and continue to breathe life into this universe and expand this universe and give these side characters more personality. But guys, let me know you also also Probably the only time we have had a duel between two serious characters in Tiger and Caterpillio, which was also refreshing and fun to see. But guys, let me know your thoughts on episode 35. Let me know your thoughts on Caterpillio, on Tiger. Do you think I'm overreacting with how badly I wanted more backstory between them? Or do you think it is weird that they made that line when they first met each other about knowing each other in the third grade and then never touching on it again? I am so excited to hear all your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching, and a special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patrons, Horace May, Goosey Q, Panther J, Blue Maiden 28, Jared Bueller, and Aura Dragon, and to my Diamond Tier Patrons, Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, and Anime Kaput, and to my Egyptian God Tier Patrons, XZ's Lover 104, Pegasus Saya, and Stella Sky. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and who is a YouTube channel member. You guys help me out tremendously. And thank you to everyone who just watches these videos. Without you guys, I would not be able to do this. I stream over on Twitch. Link in the description, twitch.tv slash superdeeprot. I stream Duel Links as well as a bunch of other games over there. So check it out if you are interested. I would greatly appreciate it. And thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you down below. And I hope you have an amazing day. Take care, guys.